This is Jennifer with Beyond 20, and today we're going to take a look at using an expression to help send outgoing emails, which will change the recipient and the sender based on the system we're logged into. So that way, if we're logged into prod or we're logged into test, we can make the sender and the recipient look different based on that current system stored value. And that prevents us from spamming actual customers and users while we're working in the test system. So I'm going to start here in the desktop client and we're going to go to the one step manager and I'm going to change my association to incident and that's because we're going to be pulling data from fields on the incident record. So I'm going to look at the out of the box email one step follow up email and this is the one step that is used if you click on a customer's email address under that requester section on the incident form. So I'm going to right click and edit and we're going to go to the email step and we'll just take a quick look here at the template. Um, you should be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, the customer's name is going to be automatically populated from the incident record, actually from the relationship from incident to customer. Uh, there's a hyperlink that's provided to allow the customer to go straight to that record in the portal and we're going to pull some information from the record itself such as the created date and time and the incident type and um, ID number. But what we're interested in looking at today is going to be the from field and the to field and the expressions that are used to populate those fields. So first we want to look at the system state email in the from field and we're going to right click and go to properties and what you're going to see here is a case statement and that first case we're looking at it says if current system stored value equals production then use the current system production email sender stored value and the second statement if that current system stored value is equal to dev then use the current system dev email sender stored value. So what are we talking about here? If we go to the ellipsis for the current system stored value, we're going to go into the stored value manager and I'm going to right click on current system and show you what's going on. So here you have a description that tells you it's current system set to dev or production. This value determines the sender and recipient email accounts used during testing versus the production sender and recipient. So when you are in your test or your dev system, you're going to see this value set. If we were in production, then that value would be set to production. And then based on what's stored in this particular system, the behavior is going to change. So because we're in dev or test, we've got dev stored here. So I'm going to cancel that and let's take a look at some of these other stored values while we're in here. We're going to look at the current system dev email sender. And this comes out of the box pre-populated with an email address here. It's just a clue to let you know what information should go in this field. But this is going to end up being whatever account your test system is going to use to send email. All right, and then we go to the current system production email sender. And you'll see that even though it is a out of the box um, test value, it's still configured to look different than the dev system. And that's the clue that you're not going to be using the same email account to send from both systems. You're going to have one for your test system and then your production system is going to use whichever email address you're advertising to your customers. So I'm going to cancel out of this and we're going to go back here and just look again at this statement and you'll see again now if the current system stored value is equal to production, we're going to use that production email sender value I just showed you. And if it's equal to dev, we're going to use the dev system. And that's going to control what that from adjust looks like, depending on which system we're in. So now let's look at the to field. And we've got a custom expression here. We'll right click and go to properties. And you're going to see the first case in this statement says if current system stored value is equal to dev then use the current system dev email recipient stored value. Now let's take a look at that stored value. I'm going to click on the ellipsis and then right click and edit. And again you're going to see just an email address listed here. 
So this can be one single email address or it can be multiple email addresses all separated by a semicolon. It can be an email address that is intended for one indiv individual person or it can be a distribution list where everybody involved in testing the system can receive those emails and you can manage that membership outside of ShareWell through that distribution list. But ultimately what this means is whether you have an email that's configured to go to a customer or an email that's configured to go to the owner of a ticket or to an approver, if it's being sent from the test system, it's always going to go to whatever value is configured in this stored value right here. So this time you're going to notice we don't have a separate case statement to say if the current system stored value is equal to production. Instead, we're going to use the default value, and this is where we have the customer email address listed. So if this were notification to a team of a ticket assignment, you would see a value for that team email address. Um, if this were for an individual owner of a ticket, you'd see the owned by email in here. But what we're telling this the system is if the current system is equal to dev then always send to that dev email recipient otherwise we want to default to whoever we've defined here and you're going to see the same configuration on the incident confirmation on the resolution confirmation um, and again if this were team notification you'd see something referencing the team or an owned by email value but what this does is it allows you to configure this email in one system and then easily move it to another system without having to go back in and modify that uh, to address or the from address. It allows the system to say, based on its current value, this is how I should populate the from field and the to field. And that's it today for using expressions to determine the to field and the from field on email one steps.